in American pastime, baseball. It has led to some of the greatest moments in sports history and American history. The first players were inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame when it opened in 1939, and they were elected by the Baseball Writers Association of America. In 1936, the organization was authorized by the National Baseball Hall of Fame to serve as the body that elects former players for enshrinement. It was a very simple process. Writers who had been an active member of the group for 10 consecutive seasons received a Hall of Fame vote. They were sent out ballots and had 20 days to pick a maximum of 10 players they believed belonged in the Hall of Fame. If the player received more than 75% of the vote, they were in. To some, the process has become outdated. Newspapers have become far less influential than they were when the organization was established. Why should that be the, why should baseball writers be the arbiter of everything? Why? Because they set up the thing, it's their thing. So the problem is, is then, then we should call it the Baseball Writers Awards and nobody else's. Even more so, however, is the organization's rule that once a writer has covered baseball for 10 years, they receive a lifetime card to be a Hall of Fame voter. The argument is that some writers who have not covered baseball in decades should not be voting on a sport they do not cover up close. There are guys that have votes that haven't seen a game in 20 years. How the heck do you get a vote if you don't know anything about what's going on? However, Dom Amore of the Hartford Current says it's important to let them keep their votes. That's what we want. We don't want to lose voters who watched baseball up close in the, in the 70s or the 80s. Those are the players that are, are, are largely they've been voting on the last 10 years. While the debate has been going on for many years whether this is the best process to elect Hall of Famers or not, it wasn't until 2013 that a member of the Baseball Writers Association of America took a stand large enough to capture the entire country's attention and bring the debate to the forefront of the sporting world. Rather than even give him all the attention that he got and give that whole situation all the attention that he got, I think, I think the organization should have simply said, hey, we don't like this, but if that's what you want to do, fine, and it would have gone away. On November 13, 2013, the website Deadspin posted an article asking to buy a Hall of Fame vote from one of the members of the Baseball Writers Association of America and turn it over to the fans. Among the reasons given in the article, author Tim Marchman wrote, what was meant as a way to honor great ball players is now an annual exercise in vigorously insulting them and thereby asserting the power of the baseball writer. It wasn't long before Deadspin's wish came true. It was Dan Lebetard of the Miami Herald. In an email to Lebetard, I asked him what message he was trying to send by giving his vote away, and he simply responded by saying that reform was needed. He added, The voting process needs an overhaul to be more modern and inclusive. It needs to involve more and different voters, new media, and get fresh voices added to the old ones. Lebetard's stunt caused backlash in the organization. He was stripped of his membership card for one year and had his Hall of Fame vote taken away forever. However, he said it was worth it for the conversation it started. Members of the organization and the media weren't so convinced. He wasn't doing it to make a point. He was doing it to make his point, which is, hey, look at me. I'm not sure why you know, Dan chose to do what he did, other than this to say, look at me, look at me, look at me. I think that was the only real motive behind it. Well, at that moment, Dan Levitard uh, ceased being a uh, talented uh, columnist, uh, insightful sports person and became a clown. Do you think he deserved to lose his vote? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Shouldn't have had it in the first place. There's no denying it was a big story, however. Newspapers, television stations, and online publications all talked about it. Libertard offers up some massively lame excuse about the voting process being flawed. The Baseball Writers Association came down on him this week like a ton of bricks. Permanently banned from voting and is suspended from the Baseball Writers Association of America. I don't know really what was accomplished by this. What was accomplished was that it restarted the conversation of what needed to be done to modernize the aging system. The Baseball Hall of Fame voting process has not always been flawed. It was established in 1936 when newspapers were the only form of sports reporting that existed. Sports writers traveled with teams because that was the only way they could see them. The problem is, the Baseball Writers Association has not evolved with the times by adding new types of media. Should it all be writers? N-O. Okay? Nothing against them, but there are other baseball people 
The problem may not only lie with the organization. The board of directors of the Hall of Fame could take the vote away from the writers if they wanted to. But, despite the criticism directed at the voting process, the Hall of Fame has not shown any interest in making major changes. And some of the writers who don't cover the game anymore are in no rush to give their votes up either. Voting for the Hall of Fame is a cool thing. I, I'd want to do it too if I wasn't doing it. Oh, it's an honor. It's an honor. It's an honor. It's an honor to vote. It's an honor to take, and it's an honor to take seriously. And now, the two sides are left to fight it out. The whole thing is fun. It needs to be changed in some way, in many ways. I don't see this big problem of changing, of changing. I think it, it, it has, it's good. It's an evolving argument. While there is no one solution that will fix the problems, one thing almost everybody agrees on is that the BBWAA needs to be more inclusive. I think we're moving in the right direction on that. We probably should look at some at being more inclusive than we are. Would I be against some really um, smart former players who are not currently employed in baseball uh, being added also? I, I'd be for that. Loggers? Well, in, in another 10, 15 years, yes. You know, because, because they'll know the guys that are going to be on that Hall of Fame ballot. Do I want the guys who work or ESPN particularly former players that are not on the payroll of any team, absolutely I want them included in, in, the, in the ballot making. While the debate rages on outside of the organization, the Hall of Fame voters believe they are doing a good job and the right people are getting in. picture and I think eventually the right people have have gotten in. If you look at the at the voting year after year after year with the writers, it pretty much mirrors common sense. It mirrors what most fans would agree uh, the results should be. Currently 306 people have been enshrined in Cooperstown. Not among them, however, are several that played during the steroid era of the late 90s. Many voters disagree on how to handle these players, and this has led to a logjam on the ballot. With only 10 players being the maximum one can vote for in any year, it might be time for the organization to make a change. This year, for instance, for the first time, uh, you know, there were probably two or three guys I would have voted for if I could have voted for more than 10. So I, I, I would make it, uh, I would change that to where there's an unlimited number of people that you can vote for, uh, you know, each year. So why is baseball's voting process so much more highly criticized than any of the other major sports? Jacob says it's all about transparency. I think the baseball process is by far the most open basketball. We don't even know who's voting. The people who vote, the way I understand, don't even know who the other guys are voting. And it's certainly not open. The transparency of the voting process allows for anybody to know who any writer voted for. And it's easy for the casual fan to look at the one guy who voted for a player like Aaron Seeley and say he shouldn't have a vote. But the process is designed to absorb those types of votes. There's 550 voters, you can vote for up to 10 guys. So it would take more than one or two or three to skew the process. Oh, and while the voting process is far from perfect... I don't see it. I don't, I don't see the system broken. I don't think any process would be perfect. The bottom line is, it's an election. You can't have an election and then tell people, but if you don't vote like everybody else, then, then you lose your vote. That's not what an election is. As a group, professional, uh, the Baseball Writers Association of America have done a good job. 